So you think in order to build an amazing PC workstation, you're gonna have to spend this much on a PC to actually, you know, get something decent. Well, it's absolutely wrong. If your budget is roughly around 1500 to 2200, I'm gonna show you how you can build a beast. Beast that makes me jealous of you. Beast that can actually get anything done that you want. Maybe you're starting a small business and you wanna build something, a PC that just is really good at pretty much anything, upgradable, customizable to your workflow. That's exactly what I'm gonna show you. So let's go. Licensing Windows is cheap and easy with whokeys.com and if you use the code TN20, you get an extra discount. Complete the purchase, copy the key and paste it to the activation settings. And you're all done! Also check out their Microsoft Office 19 license and use the same code TN20 for the extra discount. Check out whokeys.com in the video description below. Now if $1500 is a little bit too expensive for you and you wish oh, maybe there's something cheaper for me, good news, this is part 2 and there's part 1 linked in the video description below. Just scroll further down, there's different budget ranges for you. So if you want to build something a bit better or worse, check out that one over there. Secondly, all the links of everything that I'm talking about are linked in the description below and very specifically everything is intercompatible here with the upgrades that I'm talking to you about. So you can choose in the video description below you can see okay is this going to be a little bit of upgrade a little bit of a downgrade so let's say you get something for your budget and you're thinking I'm a little bit you know short on this hundred dollars short what can I get rid of so check out some of these downgrades and you'll be good to go. Also, if you're thinking, I've got extra $100, can I upgrade something? There's upgrades down there as well, so go check them out. I've made sure that everything is compatible, so you can literally play around with it and find any budget that you want and upgrade, whatever you want. So firstly, roughly around $1,500, here's what I would do and I would build. For motherboard, we're using the Gigabyte Z790 Aorus Elite. This offers pretty much anything you want for your create a PC, plenty of M.2 storage, fast connectivity of everything, RAM support, good CPU support, everything. For the CPU, we're using the Intel 14700K. Right now going for $360. Hopefully by the time you're watching this, even cheaper. This is a fantastic CPU. For the price point, you're not gonna get anything better. Absolutely amazing. Now we're gonna go with the K version because we need the iGPU. Don't go with the KF in this particular instant. When I get to GPU instance, I might give you an option when you can go with the KF. As you can see here, you can save, what is it, $30 roughly around there as well. Get it a little bit cheaper, but this K version, I think is a really, really good sweet spot. Hopefully by the time you're watching this, it's even cheaper. If you are a video editor in Premiere Pro, the hybrid core architecture of these CPUs is really good. So you can work on a video in Premiere Pro and let the E cores, the efficiency cores, actually export something in media encoder and you don't feel like anything's working in the background I think is a fantastic fantastic thing for cooling the CPU we're using the Arctic liquid freezer 3 280 millimeter AIO now this comes also with a CPU bracket prevents it from bending for this price you're not gonna get a better AIO it's really really good they've got a long warranty high quality doesn't look like weird just looks very very nice as well and performance is just out of the world when you are getting this PC build, when you're getting the motherboard, one of the first things you're going to do is when you build this PC is update the BIOS, update the BIOS, update the BIOS. There can be some stability issues with earlier versions of the BIOS. The stability issues for this generation is really, really good if you update the BIOS because they fix some of the issues with the BIOS update. Just so you know, make sure you update the BIOS, okay? If you don't know how to do that, there's video guides available on the channel type in tech notice bios update guide and then i'll show you how this works basically now we need the operating ssd storage where all of our programs and operating system lives on we're going to use team group mp44 so this is a pci gen 4 x4 drive which is plenty of speed is not the fastest but for what we're going to be using this is plenty fast you're not going to notice the difference it's super super fast in terms of sequential read and write speeds up to 7.2 gigabytes per second but the random read and write speeds is what we're after here and this is a great option for that for the project drive where all of our projects and assets are going to live on i recommend the z440 cardia right now i can see it's unavailable for some reason so i'm going to have some other alternatives there in the description below as well but you want to really 
separate the workflow where your operating system and programs are running on and then when all your assets and projects are on separately perhaps even cash drive separately but this motherboard has plenty of m.2 options so you can have two or three or four m.2s if you wanted to up to you how much your budget allows you to do but i think two is a great place to start to separate the main two things operating systems and programs and then the projects we're using 64 gigabytes of ram this is a crucial program it's very very affordable now you could get a faster option as well and pay more but you're going to start to see very minimal returns and this is a very good sweet spot the 5600 mega transfers per second is also the factory spec so you can expect it and know that it's going to run stability issues very very low because it's a creative pc we value the stability a lot that's why we're going with this ram kit and there's not a better price kit available out there this is the gpu part now and for this gpu option i'm actually going to be recommending this gigabyte radian rx 7700 xt now feel free to browse around different versions of the 7700 xt i'll leave them linked below but this is a fantastic gpu that has a lot of power for video editing so if you're doing something like davinci resolve well doing if you're editing something in davinci resolve it's one of the best ones out there this interestingly performs a lot better than some of the nvidia cards that you would expect but at a much lower price point so if video editing in Premiere Pro and DaVinci Resolve is important for you, this is a fantastic card. The 12 gigabytes of VRAM just really, really fits and it's good. If you can, there is some upgrades of these available as well, the 7800 XD 3D and perhaps even more. If you're going with the AMD GPU, you need the iGPU that you get from the CPU, okay? To get Intel QuickSync, you get the best combination. Now, if you want to go a little bit cheaper, then I highly recommend getting the GPU from the previous build, which was the A770, and then you're going to get Intel QuickSync, and then you can go with the KF variant. Very importantly, the weak side of this GPU GPU is 3D performance. If you're doing any 3D, then I highly recommend getting NVIDIA. If the main workflow for you is getting 3D performance, I highly recommend going with NVIDIA if you're doing video editing as well. Now, if you're doing only purely 3D editing, just wait in a minute because I'm going to show you the photo and 3D together because there you might want to change some of these parts. But this is a fantastic GPU. For the power supply, we're using NMX 850 watt power supply. Now this is ATX 3.0, not 3.1, but for that price point, it's very, very good and affordable. It's high quality, modular, small, very, very good. Now for the case, we're using Fractal Design Focus 2. It's black, it's very, very affordable. Got 240 millimeter aspect fans in the front and looks minimal i like the way this looks you can go with white versions as well and depend you know some of them kind of cost a little bit more and less but pc case is one of those things that you can change the look of your pc the most if you don't like how this looks find a different pc case but i think this is something really nice that is very very affordable as well now finally we're buying one of these arctic p12 max fans that goes in the back of the pc to help a little bit of exhausting the hot air from outside the case and this is $10 and for that, it's a really good fan. Now, altogether, this right now costs you roughly around $1,508.18 at the time of me making this video. Check out the pricing in the video description below. Hopefully it's even cheaper when you're watching this, but that's what I would do. Now, if you can stretch your budget a little bit, here are some of the upgrades that I would go for. Now, for one of all, we're gonna keep that same because at this price point, you're really not gonna get anything extra. We'll leave it there. If you need Thunderbolt or 10 gigabit ethernet, then you can go higher, but probably not. Let me know if I'm wrong. The CPU, we're gonna upgrade to 14900K. This is a little bit of a bump in terms of price, but pretty much the best CPU you can get for that platform. There is the KS as well, 14900KS, but really that doesn't offer you that much difference. This is a fantastic CPU. When people say online that I've got stability with it, honestly, we just built this system with the 14900K. We've been running this now for six, seven months, something like that. Not a single crash, not a single issue. Absolutely amazing. And we're running this eight hours a day at least. It's fantastic. The cooler, we're upgrading from 280 millimeters to 360 millimeters. It's slightly bigger, cost only a tiny little bit extra, just a little bit more extra cooling capacity for that CPU because that 4900K can get really hot. But again, highly recommend update the BIOS and run Intel stock settings. Then nothing bad's gonna happen. 
it's fine for you. That's what I'm doing and no issues at all. For the operating system, we're going to upgrade that to Samsung 990 EVO 1 terabyte. It's slightly more expensive. It's one of the fastest operating system drives that I have tested for that price. It's really, really good. If the EVO and EVO Plus are the same price, go with EVO Plus, okay? Because it's basically just Plus but very similar performance. Again, for the secondary M.2 drive, I'm not gonna change much. Feel free to check that out if you wanna check some of the alternatives in the description below for the secondary M.2 drive. The RAM, we're gonna use the same, but now for the GPU, I would recommend the Radeon RX 7900 XT. That is gonna give you quite a big boost in performance because we get 20 gigs of VRAM now, especially in DaVinci Resolve. It's fantastic because Resolve likes to use a lot of VRAM. It's super powerful and outperforms some of the Nvidia GPUs out there. In fact, when I was testing this, it outperformed the RTX 4090 in DaVinci Resolve, which is impressive. Now, not in all aspects, but the overall scores were better at this so this is a fantastic fantastic gpu for the price now if you need to downgrade a little bit you can go with the 7800 xt but then at that point sometimes it's not worth going down depending on what the price is there if it's not that much down it maybe not make sense for example here it's actually even more expensive the 7800 xt if you're doing 3d again go check out nvidia versions that i'll try to leave in the description below which is the 4070 ti super you're going to get 16 gigs of vram it's a baby 4080 basically the 3d performance in any of the redshift blender octane render v-ray anything you throw at it it's gonna smoke any of the AMD Intel out of the water. If you 3D, that's for that. Just an extra tip over here. You might not find the 4070 Ti Super available at the time of you watching this video because Nvidia doesn't like two generations of GPUs out there on the market. So they have actually stopped producing the 4070 Ti Super and now are producing the 5070 Ti instead. Now, it might be a little bit more expensive, but because of the scalping prices, you might get the 5070 Ti at the same price point. If you can, go with that one. I'm going to leave it linked in the description below and hopefully you've got availability at the time of you watching this video. So there's a few options in the description below. Now choose the best option for you with the availability that you've got. The power supply, I would upgrade to 1000 watts and that is PCIe 5.0. So you get the 600 watt power cable. So if you later want to upgrade to 4090, for example, it's fine, or 5090, it's gonna do that. And in an ATX 3.1 compliant, which means that your cables aren't gonna burn out or melt. It's a little bit more safer that. And for 149, there's nothing cheaper. I found one NZXT one a little bit cheaper. It was on a deal, so maybe it's not available when you're watching this, but I'll leave it in the description below anyway as well. For the case, we're gonna upgrade that to Fractal North XL. I've got it actually just behind there. This is a beautiful build that we did with the Zotac RTX 4090 Solid. If you haven't seen that one yet, maybe it's not available by the time you're watching this. It's worth checking out, it's amazing. It's a little bit expensive, but it fits everything in there and looks nice. And again, the last fan that we're gonna put in there as well. Now, all together, the total for the extra upgrades is gonna take you to 2,117 if you go with all of the upgrades. Again, all of the upgrades here are intercompatible. So if you'd like to, you can only upgrade one or the other. Now, let's say you're a photographer and doing 3D. In that case, I would recommend going with AMD. Now for photo editing, especially in Photoshop and in Lightroom Classic actually sometimes as well, AMD is performing better. Going with Team Red is gonna be better. Let's say you've got the $1,500 budget up to a to 2200 something like that here's what i would go with asrock x870 pro rs for 200 dollars amazing you get usb 4 ports as well on the back 2.5 gig lan it's a fantastic motherboard we're using the ryzen 9 9950x it's the 16 core cpu the best one that you can get because cpu upgrade will give you the most performance in photo editing workflow the rest of the things don't impact it as much so let's update the component and get it maxed out as best as you can because that's the one that gives you the most performance and 13 percent off right now as you can see to cool that beast down we're using the same cooler as we used on the previous build the arctic liquid freezer 3 360 millimeters the main operating system drive we're going to go with this crucial p310 i tested that it's really really fast one of the fastest again up there 
but it's a little bit cheaper than the Samsung one. So check out which one you'd like or which one is best at that point when you're watching this, but this could be very, very good. And if you're Adobe Creative Cloud user, you get one month for free with this drive when you get it. So that drive becomes extremely, extremely affordable. Then for the secondary drive, we're gonna use the Team Group MP44 for our projects and check out the alternatives as well, if this is a lot higher when you're watching this. RAM, we're gonna use exactly the same RAM. It runs 5600 mega transfers. I bet you the 5600 mega transfers per second is gonna run completely fine on that AMD system, so you don't need to worry about that. Now, the GPU part here is interesting. If you're doing just simple video editing, you can go with the Arc B570, even though you're a photographer and you're using this PC for photography. That is a fantastic GPU. You're even gonna get Intel QuickSync that's gonna hardware accelerate all your codecs and timeline's gonna be super, super smooth. Now, it's not one of the best GPUs if you have a lot of effects and doing a lot of things. It is absolutely amazing at that price point. If you're not doing 3D, if you're doing 3D, highly recommend checking out the RTX 4070 Ti Super for that same price point and you'll get an insane performance for that. Same power supply, the same case, that's what I would go for. Now, in terms of up upgrades for this build, for these, uh, this is around $1,600, $1,700 now for this build. If you'd like, if you have some budget and you're thinking, what can I upgrade? Maybe motherboard, have a look at X870E Pro at motherboard, the upgrade for that one, for this AMD photography 3D build, because there you can get more faster networking or more workstation kind of great motherboard and some of these features in there if you need faster ports and so on they're there on the pro art motherboard and three months for free adobe creative cloud which kind of takes down the price if you're already using it and for the gpu i would go with the 7900 xd as i mentioned in the previous one because that again gives you a lot more performance if you're doing more video editing perhaps photo and davinci resolve if you want to do that and want to stay in the amd system but at the same time for 3d again go with the nvidia one that i've got linked in the description below me from the future again then. Let's talk about audio because on the last Best Bang for Buck guide, there was a few comments about door PCs as well, people who do audio. When you're doing audio, I highly recommend avoiding AMD because if you're using any of the Thunderbolt devices or low latency, then Intel seems to be the better option for you. In fact, there isn't really Thunderbolt available for AMD. You can kind of get it somehow, but honestly, the headache to go through to get it and still not working at the stability is not worth it for you. So if you're a DAW user, I highly recommend going with the Intel builds. If you're going to build a PC for audio editing, producing, then highly recommend downgrading the GPU a lot. Upgrade your RAM, faster RAM if you can, and the GPU down. You don't need that much GPU. Now, there are some things that can be accelerated on NVIDIA GPUs really, but most of the time, any GPU will do just to run your screens and things what you need. Any other questions or recommendations for DAW users? Let me know in the comment section below. So these are the parts that I would buy. Again, links in the description below. Like and subscribe if you haven't yet. And if you have any other questions or need help with your PC guides, I always get back to my neck messages linked in the description below. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.